Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> episode of Wrapped Up Revamped. I am so excited. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> but I'm also nervous. I'm also shitting myself. <laughs> I feel actually overwhelmed with the amount of books wrapped up in front of me. I really don't know what to pick. I am feeling like I want to read a bit of a shorter book for this first episode because I read a lot of longer books, like plus 400 page books in November. I didn't really read any short books and I do love a good short book. Now, I'm not gonna choose this one because <laughs> that's tiny. That would be like illegal. But I do want like a little bit of a shorter book is what I'm feeling like. So what, like we need to unwrap a book. What are we gonna go for? Oh my God, I feel like I'm about to throw up. <laughs> mm. I need to like have a look at every okay just on first instinct this one is calling my name okay so I think we're just gonna go for it I think we're just gonna do it oh my god okay but before we find out what I'm gonna be reading in this video I know I'm sorry I'm teasing you <laughs> Um, I want to say a massive thank you to the sponsor for today's video, which is Friendspire. So Friendspire is this amazing new app for book lovers. It helps you find, save and share books, movies, TV shows, podcast recommendations. I've really loved using it. It's so much fun to like explore. It gives you these highly personalized book recommendations or recommendations for movies, TV shows, podcasts, but I'm going to be mainly talking about books because make with books <laughs> and it gives you those recommendations based on both genres that you tell it that you like or based on what ratings you have given books in the past it brings together also loads of information from other like recommendation apps in one place so it has all of the books goodreads ratings for like movies and tv shows it has imdb built in so during the onboarding process it gets you to tell it some of the genres that you like so i chose things like fantasy and mystery and detective and then it gets you to rate some of your favorite books so it can kind of have just like a rough idea of what books you like to get you started but you can keep like rating books um, on there to give it a better idea of what you like so let's see what it's recommending me so on my home section we have some personalized recommendations it's interesting that project Hail mary is second the second highest recommendation for me because i loved that i gave it five stars like how does it know how does it know? Oh, You've Reached Sam is one that I'm super interested in. I've been really excited for that this year, but I just haven't got around to it. I'm going to save that one. This is a new release uh, that I've heard so many good things about. It was on my like most anticipated releases of the year video that I did at the start of the year. And I've been really, really excited for it. So that's so cool that it recommends that to me. So when you go on there, it tells you the kind of genres that the book is. And then if you scroll down, you've got the Goodreads rating as well. And you've got like a synopsis of the book. You've got all the information about it. It. Also here, you can see what the average rating across what your friends have given it is and what the average rating is across like all users on Friendspire and then you have the Goodreads rating as well. If I wanted to rate a book, for example, I've already read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, I just click rate, I tell them what I thought, I'm going to give it a 10, I absolutely loved this book. And then if you wanted, you can share it on Instagram. It generates a post for you easily. Twitter, Facebook, any of those you could choose to share it on. I'm just gonna click done and then woohoo! <laughs> That's got a super high rating. That's got a nine average rating from 97 ratings on Friendsfire, which I honestly, it deserves. So if it gives you a recommendation you wanna save for later, just click save and then you've got this section where all your saved books are together, which is really cool. And on your profile, this will be where all the recommendations and ratings that you've given live. So as you can see, there's also movies, TV shows, podcasts, and food and drink on this app as well, which is so dope, it's so cool. So these these are some of the accounts that I have followed already. For example, you've got Reese's Book Club. Um, you can see all the different books that the Reese's Book Club has recommended and what they have rated them. So yeah, I have just loved using Friendspire. I think it's been so interesting. I think it's such a great app. I will leave a link down below for you to download it. I would really recommend it. I'll also try to link my profile so you can follow me on there and we can like all see each other's ratings and recommendations and hopefully get some super great personalized recommendations. So I'll see you on there and yeah, I would really recommend you go check out the link. Okay, okay. Ah! <laughs> oh my god, I've started so I can't stop. Excuse me, what is this? 
Okay! <laughs> I wasn't expecting that at all. <gasps> okay, we're going to be reading in this first wrapped up episode, The Taking of Jake Livingston by Ryan Douglas. What? Oh my god. This is why I'm so glad it's all 2021 releases wrapped up, because I am so excited for every book here. So I meant to read this in like October spooky season, but I didn't get around to it. So we are kind of like mixing up our... <laughs> seasons here but all I know about this is that it's about a guy who can communicate with ghosts but they've always been kind of like they haven't bothered him that much but then he meets this one spirit who was a murderer I believe and he like is really getting into his head and um this was gifted to me by Fiona so thank you so much Fiona and I feel like this is a great one to start with it's one that a lot of people have been speaking about I feel like it's one that a lot of people will be interested in so we're reading the taking of Jake Livingston first I am so excited oh my god hello okay so I have finally finished filming my last vlog which was the Christmas cracker <laughs> pick what I read vlog and so I can finally start the taking of Jake Livingston and like I have a lot of thoughts <laughs> this book is about to be something okay so essentially we're following Jake who can see ghosts but it's kind of in this very like detached removed state where they're kind of like faint and he sees them reliving their deaths and he's just like yeah, I don't know I'm at the office you know <laughs> spooky ooky kooky and creepy but it seems that this ghost of a serial killer, a school shooter from the area has come back and is kind of making much more tangible connections with Jake, is doing things that, that you know bleed into the real world that other people can see. And he seems quite determined and quite, you know, scary. And then we are also following that character's perspective in the past. And this is why it's such a hard read because with this character, it's a diary that he's writing in the past before what he did happened. It's it's a hard read because I feel like instinctively, I don't know whether you don't want to sympathize with him is the right phrasing, but you don't want to like have an attachment to this character because of what you know he goes on to do. But it's very, it's a very hard read because, you know, trigger warnings for child abuse, child neglect, everything under that kind of sun is happening to this character. He's, he's had like, I mean, shitty upbringing doesn't even begin to cover it. And so I, I feel like it's a bold move that Ryan Douglas has made to do that because it's a conscious choice. I feel like that's the whole, kind of the whole point of the book. For us as a reader to kind of have that, be stuck in the middle of that questioning of like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna sympathize this character because I know the horrific thing that they go on to do, but I'm kind of being led to feel that a little bit. A little bit. I mean, not completely, but like a little bit. I would also say, you know, trigger warnings and big trigger warnings in this for school shootings and particularly kind of like the mass trauma that students in the US feel because of that. We've already had some like hard scenes within this first 50 pages. And I also think it's gonna deal very much with like microaggressions and ingrained racism in white spaces. Jake is one of the very few black students at his kind of prep school that he's at. We're already kind of seeing biases and microaggressions and stuff. So again, if, if you need a trigger warning for that, you should be aware of that. But um, with Jake's perspective, listen, there's a lot of words. <laughs> I'm not gonna conversate with you. I'm not going to invest time I think it's in you. Huh? Just say talk. I'm not gonna talk to you. There's a lot of words. We've got, is it ectoplasm or ectomist? Death loop? Like there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> there's a lot of supernatural stuff and I'm already feeling actually like this book could be a bit longer and listen I love a short book listen we all know I, I love a short book that's the whole reason I unwrap this but I've already had at least two instances in this first 50 pages where I've been like I don't have a fucking scooby what is going on I I'm like looking around the room like anyone else Anyone else? <laughs> kind of action scenes we've seen with ghosts. I'm getting confused as to who is saying what and I can't visualize what is happening. And I'm hoping that's not gonna be something that continues throughout because that's like one of my pet peeves. If I can't visualize it, what's the point? In those scenes, I feel like every other line has been cut out. I'm like, what is going on? The editor was a bit too slapdash. But yeah, I really like Jake as a character and I find Sawyer the the the, sh the you know the shooter it's very hard to read but it's very interesting and that is the whole point and it's and i i actually i have to applaud ryan douglas for like writing a ya 
with this kind of perspective because that's a hard thing to do and I feel like it's an ambitious thing to do and I think it's a, a very easy thing to do badly and so far I don't feel like that's happening. So it's currently, is it like nine o'clock? It's quarter past nine. I want to read to halfway tonight and check in with you again even though I'm tired. You're, the next check-in I'm going to be a bit like you know, that's like another 70 pages. So I'm gonna try and read to there and then we'll check in again and then I'll go to sleep and we'll read the rest in the morning is the plan. I have the audiobook and at the speed that I'm reading it physically at, we only have about two hours and 20 minutes left. So quick maths, we can do this. <laughs> Okay, I'm very tired. <laughs> I am halfway through the taking of Jake Livingston and like, I don't understand anything. I don't understand. Sorry about it. I don't understand. I don't understand, bitch. Don't understand. I don't understand, bitch. Like, I have the audiobook as well. I got the audiobook for like optimum reading experience was all I was thinking in my head. The audiobook is very good, like the narrators are really good, especially for Sawyer, but I, I don't understand the supernatural, otherworldly, other dimension element of this. Like there's just people, like he's like, oh, then a guy fell through the ceiling and then a guy fell through the wall and then this person was, and then, and then I flung myself that, uh, 10 miles. And I'm like, what? I don't think it's just me either, right? I don't think it's just because I'm sleepy. I've looked at lots of reviews and lots of people are like, the time is what the fuck. They're like, I don't understand it either. So it's not just me. It seems to be a bit of a problem with this book. We have had like a queer relationship introduced. Jake has a love interest with a new guy at the school. And that's cute, but I feel like it's been a bit insta-lovey. Like the guy was like, do you like brownies or cupcakes? And Jake was like, oh my god, let's get married. <laughs> but also, to be fair, I do feel like criti criticisms of insta love in YA are a bit unfounded because when you're 16, you fall in love straight away. <laughs> yeah, I can attest to it. <laughs> but um, like it's fine, like I'm enjoying it, but I'm confused. I really enjoy the moments that aren't those otherworldly like elements because I just don't understand. <laughs> I just don't know, like the fact that I'm halfway through, I'm like, where are we gonna go? And I don't like this because I wanted the first episode of Wrapped Up to be like, outstanding like a five star new favorite but like I, it's not gonna be that it's not gonna be that if i can just become a little bit less confused in the second half of the book that will be a win morning i got to page 190 last night and like it's fine <laughs> just need a bit of space if that's okay <laughs> mm. yeah I'm still enjoying it. I'm still really enjoying the audiobook. I think the audiobook is great and I'm enjoying the direction that the book is now going in. It's kind of had a little, a few things happen that I wasn't expecting and I think is very, very interesting. But I just, I still have some problems with it in terms of <laughs> the kind of world building and like a reader understanding of what's happening. I will say though, I feel like this book has great pacing. I feel like the pacing of this book is amazing. We're always moving on to the next thing, you know, it's constant, the plot is constantly, constantly moving, which you need with a short book like this, but like you never feel like you're in a scene for too long or too short of a time. I feel like it's paced really, really well. I just think maybe we needed some extra scenes in there to kind of explain stuff. Actually, very interestingly, I forgot to mention this at my last check-in, but there was like, on the audiobook, there was like two pages worth of 
a scene which was pretty like much world building explanation that wasn't in the book so I wonder I feel like a while ago I couldn't access the audiobook so I wonder if the audiobook is newer and that has perhaps been added in to like later editions of the book to explain stuff a bit better I, to be fair I didn't fully really take in what it was because I was more just like looking around the page like where is this? <laughs> I've got lost. But it was kind of, yeah, like world building on how like the dead world, ghost world works, which I found very interesting. I was like, huh. So like that, I feel like that shows a bit of a recognition that the reader needed a bit more explanation as to what was happening. I feel like this book wasn't a great pick for the first episode of Wrapped Up. Like I feel like this book kind of needs to be in a multiple book reading vlog. I don't necessarily feel like it holds up on its own because I don't think there's necessarily much to discuss about it. I will say I, I really also am loving the look at you know, racism, not even microaggressions. I've saw, I've seen a lot of actually <laughs> reviews before I read it call it microaggressions. I don't think it's microaggressions. I think it's aggressions. <laughs> In this school where he's one of the only black students and I think that is being looked at really well. But something has just happened. Listen, I was a little bit shocked. I was a little bit spooked. So I'm gonna go get ready for the day. And I think I've only got like 50 pages of the book left. So I think I can pretty much finish it listening to the audiobook whilst I get ready. So that's what I'm gonna go do. And then we'll check in. I feel like this vlog hasn't been very good as well because I've literally read this book over last night and this morning. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna try and pick a little bit of a longer one for the next episode, I think. A circle, the command. I just finished it and I'm gonna give it three stars. I'm gonna give it three stars. I, it just didn't really do it for me. It just didn't quite, it didn't quite do it for me. The, whoa, I. <laughs> I need a drink. The problem of not being able to picture any of the action scenes persisted and if anything got worse for me throughout this. Like, and it's not just that I was listening to the audiobook because I was listening to the audiobook when I was doing my makeup really slow. Like I was listening to it way slower than I would usually listen to audiobooks if I'm not reading them physically, if I'm just listening to them. And I still couldn't follow. And I've read loads of reviews. I watched a bit of um, Gabby's live show because it was one of, this was a book club pick for her book club. And like everyone is saying they couldn't picture it. So it's not just on me. <laughs> and I feel like that's a shame because that is one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to books is if I can't picture what is going on. It, it was so hard to follow. I will say I did really enjoy the premise, the plot, where this book went in the end. I thought that like the kind of concept, I can't spoil it, but like what was happening was very interesting and fun to read about. I will say perhaps on reflection, I'm not quite sure the whole like Sawyer perspective thing worked. It's a very difficult thing to do. Like the author is trying to make us in many ways empathize with this boy who's done something so horrific. And I feel like he had too many chapters. Like it was, uh, especially at the start, it was every other chapter wasn't his perspective. And it was something that was very hard to read from. And, but in many ways also, I feel like towards the book, towards the end of the book, it was getting confused over it whether it wanted us to empathize and feel bad for him or not. And, you know, he'd been through terrible, terrible things, but like, he was also doing terrible, terrible things. So it's a very hard thing to read about. And I'm just, it was such an ambitious thing to do. And I'm just not a hundred percent sure it was pulled off like perfectly. I think it was, I, you know, I still admire the book for like taking a risk and doing something different, 
but I just don't, I don't think I felt the way that perhaps I was, it was intended for me to feel by the end of the book. The queer rep in this also, I would like, I'd like to have more of, like that was one of my favourite parts of the book, I thought it was such a cute relationship. I just thought this book could actually have been like maybe even a hundred pages longer. I feel like it needed more in the way of explanation, in the way of world building, to make those scenes not confusing because they were just not it for me. So yeah, I mean I loved all of the social topics that it touched on. There was a lot that I really enjoyed about it and I think I would pick up from this author again. I think I'll try out their next book because one of my main issues was just those action scenes that I couldn't picture and I feel like that's something that's very easy to fix. So that is episode one of Wrapped Up Revamped. Um, <laughs> I'm a bit disappointed that it wasn't like a five star book, but hey ho, we move on, we move. So I hope you've enjoyed this video anyways. It was a very quick vlog, cause literally I did read this last night and then this morning. Um, if you've gone to the end, comment the wrapped present emoji. I feel like we have to do that every episode. Comment the wrapped present emoji if you've gotten to the end. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye.